Hey guys, welcome to another episode. I have Tina with me today. I'm so excited for this episode. Tina's just, what can I even say? She's just an amazing woman all around, beautiful ballerina. She's obviously an award-winning one too. So that just puts the cherry on the cake. She was originally born in Port of Spain, Trinidad, and, but now she resides in Toronto, Canada. So just to give you a little idea of what she's participated in, she's played in Carmen, Katerina, in The Taming of the Shrew, Lise in La Fille Malgarde, Perdita in The Winter's Tale, Julia in uh, Romeo and Juliet, as well as The Nutcracker's Sugar Plum Fairy. And so she's performed on stages from Toronto to New York, to LA, to Amsterdam, Germany, Paris, you name it, she's been there. She's been part of the National Ballet of Canada now for a couple of years. And uh, she's also been, she was also at the Dutch National Ballet. When she's not performing, she gives a good behind the scenes look at what it looks like to be a ballerina in business. Uh, she launched Ballerina Couture not in, during a downtime. She had an injury and so that's when the, her company blossomed. So in this episode, we'll dive deeper into that story as to how her business came about as well as her personal journey to becoming uh, the ballerina she is today as well as the woman she is today. So I'm really excited. Stay tuned and here she is. I'm so excited that you're here. This is gonna be such an inspiring episode. Uh, just to give everyone some context, I met Tina through a previous partner of mine whose friend happened to be friends with her partner at the time. And ever since then, seriously, your elegance in how you carry yourself and your just overall persona has never been erased from my mind. Uh, you're an incredibly talented ballerina and clearly a fierce entrepreneur as well. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having and, uh, me. Yeah, and to kick things off, could you share with us what you had for breakfast this morning? Oh my gosh, I haven't had time for breakfast this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I had a coffee and I went from one meeting to ballet class to this interview, so I have not had anything today. <laughs> oh my God, let's hope we make it through this. Okay. Sorry. Um, so then you know what let's dive into your story a little bit so can you tell us a little bit about your story how you grew up how you got into ballet how you got into this belief system that you now have around the business and dancing and just how did this all come together for you um, that is a very loaded question but I will try to sum it up um, I started dancing when I was five uh, I then went to the National Ballet School and focused more intensely on ballet when I was 12. Um, then I joined the National Ballet of Canada when I was 18, so I've been a professional dancer for a very long time. Um, in 2015, um, I suffered like my first major injury. I had to have uh, foot surgery, which was awful, and um, the process was um, going to be like six months. Like it, it was pretty bad, and at that time, like, I'm a very creative person. If I don't have a creative outlet, I feel very not myself. So mm -hmm. at that point in time, I was playing around with designing dancewear for myself because I just felt like the dance world was a little bit mm -hmm. outdated at that point. So I wanted to make nice pieces for myself. So I started, I just bought a sewing machine and I never had an intention of having a business or anything. I just wanted to have nice things for myself to wear. Um, and then, yeah, when I got back to dancing, a lot of dancers asked me to make them, you know, clothing and then, um, people from, you know, word of mouth asked me to make stuff for them, but I wasn't a seamstress. So I didn't feel comfortable, you know, making stuff for people to wear if they're going to fall apart, like <laughs> in the middle of their classes. You're so like, oh, no. yeah. yeah, so at some point I just made the decision to seek out a manufacturer and um, I just kind of started this business and now I'm at the point where I'm literally juggling so much at the same time but like I said before my creativity is literally my life it's my 
it's my outlet for it. It's how I live my life. So yeah. being too busy is never a bad thing for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And how did you know this was for you? Um, which dancing? Yeah, dancing. Um, dancing. Okay. So I also am the type of person that likes to, um, I don't know, kind of explore different things in life. And I don't know, once, when I first joined the company as an apprentice, we weren't really used, we weren't paid or anything. And I never really had an outside life. So believe it or not, I started to work at Old Navy. Like that was my yeah. first like real job just because I wanted to um, like meet people outside of ballet and just like, you know, experience like the world that I never got to experience in a way. And wow. sort of doing that and meeting new people kind of like, uh, I feel like I needed to know that I loved to dance and not that mm -hmm. I was just good at it because I'd done it my whole life. And I feel like that experience of pushing myself outside of this very small world allowed me to know that I truly loved it. That wow. Makes. Yeah, no, of course. I can imagine how important that is because you're right. I guess you just mentioned like from a young age, it was dance and ballet and dance and ballet. Yeah. So. And I was in a boarding school um, with 10 people in my graduating class. So my world was extremely small. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so your parents had thought ballet for sure, or how, how did they navigate you or how did you find no. Um, well, actually, when I started dancing, I was more of like an acrobat. Actually, I did jazz, tap, lyrical dancing, theatrical, like, I loved pretty much everything but ballet, I felt like it was a little bit too boring. Um, oh, that's but it wasn't until yeah, it wasn't until actually, um, I started to go to the ballet, and my parents exposed me to, you know, what life could look like for a ballerina that I just instantly fell in love. So oh. I, I take that as a big lesson that, you know, sometimes you need to see what the end result can be. And, you know, it's very different um, for a dancer growing up and training in a ballet class than it is like when you become a professional and you're doing ballet class to prepare mm -hmm. you for going on stage in front of thousands of people. Like, yeah. So um, it was very much over time, I fell in love with it more and more. Wow. And would you say that still... It still speaks to you today? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think also what most people don't know is that um, it really takes a lifetime to mm -hmm. um, own your technique and everybody's body is different. And actually uh, some of my injuries have made me really allowed me to go back to sort of the drawing board and figure things out for myself. And so I love coming into work every single day or taking class every day and finding something new. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the journey never stops. You never feel like, oh, I think I've accomplished, you know, what I, <laughs> done. I've set out what I needed to do. Like that's <laughs> just not a thing. And I'm, I love seeing uh, the improvements. Like it mm -hmm. makes me so happy to actually feel them physically in your body. Wow. And, and for you to say that, that's like, that's amazing. Cause I'm like the fact that I can even like do kind of like the pizza diagonal. Like I just saw your leg go up like this on your Instagram and mine was like, I can hardly do that. <laughs> and so I'm like, for you to say that it's just, it's so beautiful. And actually I'm curious because part of this is obviously a mastery of your craft, craft like this consistency. And so how did you, like, what went, what went into getting this level of mastery in your craft and like, what do you, do to keep learning? Um, well, I had one experience where I was kind of thrown into something with not a lot of preparation. Um, it was a very high pressure, like competition situation where I just like my normal self would just freak out and put myself in my own way, in, in, in a way. And I took from this, um, what I wanted to achieve was just my daily work was to focus mm -hmm. every single day, no matter what, to get a little bit better or just to feel a little bit better about anything. It could be my presentation, it could be my technique, it just feel, wow. go home every day and just feel like, you know what, I, I improved. And I feel like that mentality and the outcome of that situation truly changed my life. So I, I come into work every single day or I start every class with an intention of being a little bit better than yesterday. And awesome. that really that's beautiful. inspires me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wow, actually, that, that, that really touches me. That's, 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 that's amazing. So when you say that, like, how do you prepare for your performances? Because I assume there's just so much work that goes into it. Like, how do you, when it is a big performance that you're prepping for, like, would you say that it's any different to, well, of course it's different, but I mean, like, would do you put any extra, um, does, what goes into that? Um, like right before a performance or like the starting? A little bit of both, I guess, the, the lead up and then the morning after, the morning before or like just before you're about to go on stage like what goes into that because I really like that philosophy that you're talking about like just a little bit better so I'm curious how that what what belief systems you have around like right before a big show whether it's the days leading up to it or even in the morning or um yeah I think it sort of um ties into what I was saying before about like the preparation and feeling better every day um but right before a performance i feel like my biggest tool is just my relaxation and my vis visualization so um i'm not going to be up before a show like i don't know worrying about anything i feel like that's the night that i like just maybe just go through everything in my head listen to the music like feel very calm about everything and then when i come to the performance it's for me then about the audience and the audience experience rather than mm -hmm. how I'm going to do on stage. And I feel like um, that's sort of my gift, like literally, yeah. you know, is to yeah. give all of the work that I've put in. And uh, I just think if I were in the audience, I, I would not want somebody stressing out on stage. I want to see somebody who's, you know, let go mm -hmm. and just, I always like tell my students, how you feel is how the audience will feel. So if you feel good and confident, the audience oh, yeah. will feel good and confident. Or if the thing I love the most actually is um, to be in a role where you're a character and I love to like lose myself completely in that because then in oh, that yeah. way, I, I'm not even a part of that anymore. And so that's my favorite part of being on stage actually. Oh my God, that's such a great little trick. It's like a mind mm -hmm. trick that you really mm -hmm. get into your, wow. So throughout this journey, I guess, obviously you've learned a lot about yourself, but one of the things that I always like to look at is like, how would you, def what is your definition of success? Like, and what do you attribute your success to as in like, that's inside of you? Um, I think as long as I keep learning and I keep growing and I keep pushing myself, um, that's my idea of my personal success. That's beautiful. Yeah, and throughout your journey in this, in this growth and, and um, what did you discover about yourself like in this process? Like what were some of the things that you were like, wow, I didn't even know I had that in me or wow, I'm glad I let that go kind of thing. Yeah, I think um, as a ballet dancer, there's a lot of disappointments. <laughs> and yeah. um, I think I learned how resilient I could truly be. And I also learned um, that all you have to do is show up and that's half the battle and give your best and mm. the outcome is going to be the outcome. So I never beat myself up over anything, but I have become, yes, like pretty resilient <laughs> in life, wow. I think, because of a lot of my struggles. So it wasn't always like this, I guess, from the beginning where you, what was it like at the beginning, would you say? Um, the beginning of like your career as a, as a ballerina. Uh, it was very exciting being a young mm. dancer for sure. Um, you train for like two hours a day in school and then you have academic classes, but when you become a professional, you're just dancing all day long and it feels like a dream come true. And then to be paid on top of it, like, <laughs> you're like I just feel like the world was my oyster. <laughs> <laughs> that is so amazing. Oh my God. And then I guess on this journey, there was obviously so many people that supported you, but also there must have been some people that um, we're not against, but sometimes we do have people that are like not supportive necessarily. So what was that journey for you? Where did you get your support from? Like when you really had those tough moments and then um, how did you learn to let go of those people that were not necessarily in your best interest? Um, well, I've, I'm very close with my family. I have, um, my parents are amazing. I have two sisters. My husband's amazing. I have a very strong support system, so I'm very lucky. 
um, when it comes to people not supporting me, I feel like that's where a lot of my resilience has come from. And I just feel like at this point in my life, I know the, you know, myself, I know how hard I work and I know what I can accomplish. And I feel like if I can't get it from something, I'll find a creative way to get it somewhere else or to find it somewhere else. Um, um, yeah, I feel like in the beginning when I was younger, that was much harder to deal with for sure. But mm-hmm. as I've matured, um, I just, I, I'm, I have so much peace of mind in myself that I can acknowledge that maybe somebody trying to hold me back is more of their problem than it is mine. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. So what do you tell your students now that you're teaching when you see that like young Tina, well, obviously not you, but when you see that young, um, that like dancer, then you are just like, Oh, I, I just, I can relate. Like what, what would, what do you say? Um, I just try to, I guess, you know, you can only speak from your own experiences sometimes. So, so true. I try to just, first of all, create an environment where um, people feel comfortable, um, but not yeah. too comfortable because I have to be the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a fine balance, but um, I feel like, yeah, I, so, so many of the things that dancers go through are, are so similar that because I think I've been through so much of my career, I'm able to give um, each dancer, whatever, maybe they specifically need. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I guess there's that sense of relatable. but you're also being um, Absolutely. intuitive about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So actually in the, uh, you know, it, it's always such an interesting question because you've obviously been in the industry for, for, for a while, but in the world of ballet, I really, I assume that like looks and size is really important in order to keep like best performance. So how do you, in, in life in general, how do you manage that and how has it ever affected how you look at yourself or your body or food or anything like that? Like it doesn't have to be negative or positive. I'm just curious. Um, yes. Because every dancer, like their physique is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, every single dancer feels, you know, that in some way. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of, you go through a lot of trial and error and you just have to get to know your body and to know what works for you. Like, for example, I know dancers that can go home and eat like cookies and cakes and all of this stuff. And I'm like one of the more like healthier dancers in the company, Mm -hmm. which like really boggles my mind. Um, (laughs) everybody's just living their lives and I'm eating my salads and like, you know, um, but I enjoy that. That's also what I crave. And so I found like a really healthy relationship to food and my body, I think at this point. Yeah. It's such a key, um, yeah, key element of it. I can imagine. You have to know yourself. Yeah. It's that knowledge. It's true. And it's over years of like Mm -hmm. balancing that. So um, and actually you bring up a good point with, um, I feel like it's just, you were mentioning how like eating healthy is just a part of who you are now. So it's like, mm-hmm. so actually how, when you do have setbacks in life, like when you were establishing these things for yourself, these, like, I call them like standards or these ways of being, um, how did you move through any setbacks? Like you mentioned recently, you just had an injury. Uh, how, how was that for you? Like, when you were facing something, how did you move through it? Um, well, it's definitely the most awful thing that could happen to a dancer. Um, and I feel like you always go through a little bit of a grieving period because you're going to miss shows. You're going to miss like being in the studio. Your whole daily life is kind of turned upside down, kind of like what everyone's going through right now. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it doesn't take me long to be like, okay, what am I going to do about this? Like I can't, yeah. I'm not the type of person to just, um, even if I'm just like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to pick up this book and I'm going to read and I'm going to learn something and I'm going to, you know, come out of this stronger. That's always my approach. So no matter how long it takes me to get to a point of like, okay, what else can I do now? Um, I'll always find this. Oh, and always push myself to learn something. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful. That's true. It really is true that two millimeters or that little bit every single day is, uh, I guess it's really what's kind of opened it, opened the gates for you. Sorry. Can you hold, sorry. Can you hold on one second? My AirPods died. And 
And uh, so when you're dealing or managing with rejection, which is a huge part of like any, anyone's career in general, but also like as a dancer, um, how, how have you navigated that? Like, I know this is a big topic, like getting no, you know, or someone saying you're doing this wrong or like all the feedback throughout all the years. How did you manage that? Like, what was that for you? What was that like for you? Um, you just kind of have to respect people's decisions. I think like depending on, you know, who's rejecting you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> whether it's like you know if they're, it's a choreographer then they just don't want me in their piece or you know um I don't know I think I just try not to take things personally and yeah. I try to grow from every experience but you know I'm not going to be for everybody and I think I'm okay with that yeah but you know there's so much power to that because it's true I think um it can become so personal you know mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to be which I think is yeah that. Beautiful example of that. So now, actually, I want to just uh, end this because I know this is like one side of what you do, but I also want to move on to the other one, which is just as exciting. Um, but what would you say is your, how do you prep, what's your morning routine? Like, how do you prep for the day? Um, that's a good question. I think I like to prep for the week more, um, okay. especially now with this uh new life um i've spent you know this is what day is it tuesday so it's been <laughs> <This is> amazing <laughs> it's been um just over three weeks you know since we've stopped our performances so um we were actually supposed to have a vacation um my husband and i were supposed to go to mexico <laughs> and that didn't happen but when um we stopped performing i really needed um that break so um, I took a little time off and in that time, I used it to um, sort of formulate a new game plan for um, this period. And that took a little bit of time, just trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to do, what I wanted to accomplish, try, trying to just completely switch gears. So um, yeah. my schedule now obviously looks completely different to the schedule that I had set, the weekly schedule I had set beforehand. Um, so yeah, I kind of just try to put the week together with um, and spread out the things that I have to do so I can still, um, I don't know, touch base with everything yeah. and then just see how everything is looking and then kind of revise for the next week. But there are certain things that I have to do every single day, um, like ballet class or um, I'm learning Spanish. I have to practice Spanish every day. Um, I have to do like a little ballet workout. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. In Spanish, just out of curiosity, just for fun? I uh, know my husband is Colombian. Ah. So, and I've been learning for years, but um, this time I feel like I've really made a little jump. So I, awesome. have, I am forcing myself to just maintain that every single day. Just <laughs> so. We're cheering you on. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, and actually, you said something so interesting, which is I find is like getting into the mind like the behind the scenes of like people who are obviously as successful as you are. And like when I, when you say something like that, I always like to pick up on that. You said, I like to create a game plan. Like I like to set myself up and organize it so that this way I know what I'm, I'm doing. So not that we need to go into detail, but I'm just curious, what does creating a game plan look like for you? Like, what are you, what are you looking at? What are you considering um, before you go into that session with yourself? Um, well, right now, uh, things I need to do, like I said, ballet class and like my Spanish, that sort of thing. So I sort of like just write down all of these things that I want to do, or even for example, right now, um, because we're at home and I usually dance for six hours a day. And right now I'm doing like one class. I don't really have space to do even the second half of ballet class. There's two parts. So it's like, I could just dance for one hour a day as opposed to six or take two classes and do two hours a day, but it's still not even comparable to what I would yeah. do at work. That's so okay. I was thinking of, um, and even when I was dancing, I started to formulate a little bit of a, like a ballet workout. Um, and I just feel like now might be the time to sort of offer that to the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm also half my day now was spent 
thinking of like these exercises and just things that can keep me in ballet shape while I'm at home and sure. things that also, um, and then I'm like trying out different things and I'm trying to make everything kind of um, friendly for people who don't necessarily do ballet, but want to sculpt like a ballet body. That's my intention. Yeah. I don't know if what's going to happen, but. Um, but that's amazing. Yeah. These Sign are just me up. <laughs> I have yeah. seen your photos. You have these amazing <laughs> legs and this beautiful body so Thank sign me you. up sister yeah <laughs> <laughs> well okay so you know what let's switch hats a little bit and um maybe you can tell us a little bit more about this we, we did hear a little bit about ballerina culture just a few minutes ago but um maybe in more detail you can share us share with us a little bit about how you took it from you selling it to what it is now which is actually pretty amazing um, well, I think a lot of people are always shocked at how much real life happens as a business owner. <laughs> um, being a ballerina is one thing, but being a business owner is literally the thing that keeps me on my toes because when I'm a dancer, I'm sort of in control of things. Owning this business has, um, and especially when I'm dealing with things like manufacturing and that sort of thing, you're not, I'm not in control of that. Mm -hmm. So that's something I've had a really hard time with because nobody's going to care as much about your product as yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, so, true. believe it or not, I've started over with, um, four different, um, scenarios. <laughs> and so, um, right now I'm starting sort of, I'm sort of in the middle phase of restructuring everything but I'm very lucky to have like two amazing seamstresses who um, one has moved away to Calgary. So I'm like writing to her, she's making stuff, she's shipping it to me, I'm shipping it off. Like it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really hoping that soon, and especially with this time, it's amazing that I have to devote to it, that it can start to run a little bit smoother because I finally have the time to mm -hmm. focus on it because um, you know, ballet is, my life it's my priority and um when i started this i was injured right so i had all of this time and then now that i'm back dancing i my business always gets sidelined in a way like i haven't i've been able to maintain everything which has been amazing but i haven't been able to continue to grow which has yes. been extremely frustrating um so i feel like now even just having the time to be like oh what should my next design be or what should my next color be is just such a breath breath of fresh air for me so yeah that creative um, process again mm -hmm. wow that's actually really interesting that you say that because it's like you got another downtime and then again like you go back into the business and last time it was starting it and this time it's like how do I revamp this into something bigger or more offerings more products whatever it might be that it turns out to be so that's awesome that's awesome yeah. and actually um would you say that like, how do you manage your time right now between the two hats? Like when you are working full time at the National Ballet of Canada and you have this business going on, because I assume you have clients, like how are you juggling everything? Like, how do you manage your time between these two? You have to wake up super early. There's no other way to do it. You have to wake up early. <laughs> but um, it gives me so much inspiration. Like I don't see it as work. Like if anything, it becomes a part of my day that's my own. Um, mm. and I feel so fulfilled with it and I, I am continuing to grow, even though, you know, I might not feel like that or there's more that I always want to do. Um, I feel like I always give myself time in the day, um, mostly before work to just, um, spend some time with it. And that gives me, in, makes me feel empowered for the rest of my day. Anyway. Yeah. So I like there, accomplishing is, things before I start my day. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, but that's awesome. So you would say you'd set like the morning for it and then you're off to work mm -hmm. or work. But um, mm -hmm. I say work because like you say with so much pleasure that I'm like, is it really work? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that's awesome. So if you were to say like, what would be your, what's like your mission or your vision with Ballerina Couture? Like where, where would you want to take this? Ideally, um, like in a blue sky. I think I just want to help dancers feel beautiful. I feel like wow. dancers put so much pressure on themselves. They're always like, they're the hardest people on themselves. We're always looking in the mirror. We're mm. always judging ourselves. 
So I feel like the biggest, like, I don't know what makes me the happiest with this business is receiving feedback from people being like, I put on your leotard and I felt so pretty and I had to dance around when I first got out. I was just like, that's all I needed to hear. <laughs> okay, <laughs> What's next for tomorrow? <laughs> so that's, oh. and I think that's something I felt that, you know, so many leotards before were shaped, you know, for like a 12 year old boy and you grow up and then you become like a woman and you want to feel beautiful and yeah. not like you have to fit into this box of just this thing that's unflattering on your body. And so I think, yeah, that's my goal is just to make dancers feel like, Oh, I just want to dance now. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh my God. You mean I want to dance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Awesome. So like, would you say that before this came out, that's how old the ballerina like dress wear was? Like it was just not up to date at all? Has this um, always been an issue? No. Nowadays, that just goes to show how old I am. <laughs> but nowadays, like there are so many options for leotards and it's like the world has opened up and it's so nice to see. Um, mm -hmm. I think my niche is sort of my niche. My vision has always been my vision. So, um, yeah, I, there's a lot more options for girls these days. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, because you know, sometimes like somebody comes up with some innovation in an industry where you didn't even know that things were like that, um, dated. So I'm like, I don't know. So this is really interesting. Well, so, okay, I mean, even, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go yeah, I, I feel like even still now, some of like the uniforms that young girls have to wear, it's like they're they're so traditional there's still like um a bit of a shift happening you know where mm -hmm. like for example with some of my pieces I try to have them have structure but like the same structure but just fit better yeah and I think that's what's still uh, missing from just sort of your standard spaghetti strap leotard for example mm -hmm. I see what you mean yeah yeah mm -hmm. Okay. So then what I actually, this is such an interesting question because you wear so many hats. Um, and I often find like, as we grow older, we always like start to become one. But initially when we always start, we have these different personalities or we feel like we need to be different people sometimes. But so would you say that Tina, who would be like the ballerina is the same as the Tina that's at home or the Tina that's the entrepreneur, or do you literally put on different caps and like you're, could be you're obviously the same person but I mean like essentially you would you're different at the same time um no that's a really good question but no I don't have time to be anyone but myself <laughs> at all times. they're all the that. same Tina whether she's like you know perfect at the bar or she's a mess like with her 12 bags like I I'm that's always amazing. myself I have to say but I'm so glad to hear that you have that level of comfort and confidence in who you are. So it's amazing. Um, and actually just talking about like inspiration, cause you're talking about like your pieces and how much they give you as well, but how you make other women look so beautiful as well. But where does that inspiration come from for creating your pieces, like the colors that you pick or maybe the fabrics and also what goes under inspiring your, what, how you put like a choreography together or like what actually inspires you? Oh, that's a good question. I think um, if you ask anyone in my family, I'm full of million dollar ideas. So I'm just like, always, like it would be, yeah. you know, just thinking about ways and like, I always say, you know, some people will be like, but I don't know what my passion is or I don't know, um, you know, where to start. And I just always say to start anywhere just start anywhere. And believe it or not, Ballerina Couture started with a blog. <laughs> it wasn't even a leotard company. It was just a blog, just an outlet for me just to, because I always loved the relationship between ballet and fashion. And yeah, it just started as a blog. And over the years, like I just, because, you know, I always had like ballet and fashion was the premise. It really was the premise, just like joining both of those worlds. Yeah. So over time, like the little strategies I had or the little initiatives I had could be different, but that base was always the same. Mm -hmm. So I think it inspires me to, yeah, bring fashion to the dance world and also wow. tie in my career. And then even if I, for example, like the ballet workouts are all a stem from all of that. 
So I can wear my leotards, I can get a workout, and I can still fulfill my ballerina ness. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's so crazy. Yeah. Give it to the world. <laughs> So it's like win, 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 win. I just try to be as efficient as possible with my <laughs> creativity. You're I don't amazing. know. That's so awesome. It's so true. It's like the worlds are like colliding together. It's really, really nice to see that. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Wow. It's like sometimes you have to take out everything. All, you have to like when you're cleaning, you have to like take everything out and then you see everything and then you put it back together. Yeah. So that's how I feel about, you know, finding your passion. It's like, okay, well, I like biking or I like, you know, swimming. And then how, how does that tie in for you? Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. And how do you piece it together in your own unique way so that it all kind of falls into place and it just feels so natural? Yeah. That makes you happy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's actually really powerful. That's a good nugget. So what... I always like to ask this question because I'm always working on something in myself and I'm not assuming everyone else does, but I'm just curious, is there something that you would like to improve in yourself or something that you're really working on right now that you're like, you know, I've noticed I have this habit and I'm like, I'm trying to, or I've noticed that uh, I do this and I would really like, is there anything that you'd mm -hmm. like to improve within yourself? Definitely. Um, I think a lot of the times we get in our own way with, you know, mm -hmm. negative thinking or just self-criticism, all of this stuff. Um, and it's perfectly natural. It's a part of life that helps you grow. But mm -hmm. I'm sort of in a phase in my life where um, I'm trying to let go mm -hmm. of things that do not serve me. And wow. um, whether it's my thoughts, whether it's people, whether it's situations, or I'm trying to just live my best life. And I oh, yeah, just... Amazing you know, if something doesn't work for me anymore, then I'm okay with letting it go. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just trying to, I'm trying to give myself creatively mm -hmm. to myself and the world without um, anything else, without mm -hmm. any extra baggage so that I can just wake up and be my happy, happy self and be around people <laughs> who are, you know, working on the same sort of level. Yeah, yeah. And no, and so that you can give, you know, the full Tina experience, which is like all this beauty that you're creating through whether the leotards are teaching other young aspiring dancers and, and uh, dancing yourself. So I assume that's a lot. That's already a lot, actually. You wear a lot of hats. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> are you enjoying wearing your entrepreneurial hat? Like, um, as like when you think business, is it something that you're enjoying? I don't really think about it like business. I feel like if I thought about it like business, I'd be like, what am I doing? Who am I to think that I belong in this world? I have no experience, I have, you know? Um, but again, it's like I just, I, every day, it's like what's presented to me, what I have to mm -hmm. do is so enjoyable. Um, obviously, there are things that aren't, so like the side of business, like the spreadsheets and the numbers. That's why I have my amazing husband to help me out but like there are really things yes I absolutely just don't like but um I don't really like to think more about just what I'm doing in the present moment or what I'm doing kind of short term and I feel like when I maybe get to uh another place then maybe I'll think about I don't, I don't know <laughs> yeah. I'm more of a like look back and okay that's what I accomplished rather than a, oh my gosh look what I have to do in front of me sort of thing mm -hmm. wow yeah that's so true and along that way along that path actually have you what's one of the toughest decisions you've had to make that you were like I still think about it um well luckily I've I don't know if there's been a lot. It's like if I have one model in life and have had one model in life since I was a young yeah. girl, it's truly not to regret anything. Um, mm. Just always, if you have to say it, you say it. If you have to do it, you do it. But I think the worst thing for me ever, and I just knew this at a young age, is to look back mm. and be like, I didn't, I should have given 125% or I should have like, I should have said that when I had the chance or, I just, I couldn't, I don't know, that's, if I have yeah. one motto, that, that's what it would be. Um, but one of the biggest challenges of my life was, um, you know, when I first started this business, the first time that I went through, you know, my manufacturing, it just all went 
sidewall. Yeah. So sideways. <laughs> and I had to really, you know, think about that. But I also feel like from that experience, mm -hmm. I realized, okay, I'm starting a business. There are probably going to be so many more sideways experiences mm -hmm. and I'm just going to get back up and just keep going no matter what. And there has been, but nothing has ever got me down the way that first time did. And I was like, never again. Like, this is my oh. mission. This is life. And this is going to happen again. And I'm just going to be like, okay, what's next? <laughs> Wow. And Tina, I've always been like this. This is remarkable. Like, did you see that in your parents or you just, you were just so intuitive? Were you just very? Um, I think I've just been through a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, when this didn't go well the first time and I poured everything into this business, starting this business, like it really shattered me. Like it really, and it like for months, you know, I couldn't figure out what to do because I had this idea, I had this passion, but I had my first experience just not work at all. Wow. So that just got me down. And one day I just got back up and then I just, I realized that this is just part of life. Every single successful business is going to go through this or, you know, multiple mm. times. And um, I don't know, I guess I have done a lot of reading. Like I know we both love Tony Robbins. He is like, my I wish he could be like my personal guru I'm literally obsessed with him <laughs> so I've learned so much too from just like reading his books and like I said like I've always been inspired by the people who have done the impossible always mm. so um for example like my favorite quote of all time is a Chinese proverb and it says to ask sorry to know the road ahead is to ask those coming back so it's like Whoa. nothing we ever do is like well probably not, maybe some things, but in this world, most things have been done before, you know? It's so and true. So true. Yeah. You, I've just always been inspired to learn from the people who did it against all odds. And, um, wow. So I haven't always been like this. No, but I have a major thirst to learn from super successful people. Wow. Yeah. It almost feels like you were born from the womb and it was like, no, I'm kidding. It's not no. true. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> not at <so> all. <laughs> No, I'm sure. Um, that's uh, so amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Actually, that ties right in. That ties greatly into the next question I had. Is like, what is some great content out there that you recommend that really gets you going and it motivates you? Whether it's books, podcasts, um, just people. Um, is there anything that you'd like? Be like this. This was awesome, or this is something I recommend people listen to. Is there anything? Um. You know, everybody's different and everyone's at different points in their journey. Um, for me, I'm like a per pretty spiritual person. Um, so I love to read about, and I personally feel like I've lived before. And um, I just, I just like to absorb any kind of knowledge just mm -hmm. to make my own opinions about things. So um, I don't know. I think my greatest advice would be, be just to read whatever you can at any time yeah. you can you'll always learn something rather than watch netflix just pick up a book <laughs> so true especially right now right it's like just mm -hmm. keep picking up the books mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing and there's also some pretty good the content even if you didn't want to read like in the podcast form so it's true mm -hmm. there's no excuse so actually just to kind of like start concluding everything is what's what would you say is like your personal mission moving forward like what what's what's exciting right what's exciting for you right now what are you looking forward to and what's a personal mission that you're like you know i'm really striving to do this personally um it's a really good question i think uh just being recently married i i have a new role of being a wife that's fun and new and something you know, that makes me happy and yeah. like learning Spanish. Um, I'm going to need to do that for, oops. Can you see me? Sorry. I disappeared yeah. for a second. Um, that's something I want to be able to talk to my in-laws and I just want to, you know, so that's mm. a big thing for me and for them. Um, right now though, I honestly feel like I'm just, um, I don't know. I feel very creatively satisfied and I just I think I I don't necessarily know where I'm going to end up but I know it's going to be good yeah. <laughs> so it's it's 
out of like 10 things that could happen to me, I feel like, because, like with the work that I just do with myself, um, I feel like it's just going to be good. So I'm just kind of excited for the unknown, actually, <laughs> more <laughs> than anything. So <laughs> wow, no a lot of people can say that. That's actually really, really amazing. That's, that's great. And especially now, like there's a lot of unknowns right now. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. So if people wanted to find you, how can we find you? They want to um, follow your journey. Mm -hmm. I think my biggest platform is Ballerina Couture. Mm -hmm. um, I try to tie in, you know, my dancing life and, you know, as well as my leotards and show off some of my friends. And, you know, um, I think that's the biggest platform. Um, I'm going to play around with maybe doing some YouTube stuff uh, with all this quarantine time. So I think that'll awesome. be a good place. That's also Ballerina Couture. Um, actually, it's funny. I just signed up for... Uh, YouTube with my personal account and then my husband's like why would you do that if everything is going to ballerina sure I'm just like yeah I feel like I have an identity crisis <laughs> <laughs> who am I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't even know where I should be sending people so yeah I think ballerina couture is uh, the way to go <laughs> that's amazing it's true I guess when you're like wearing both you're like I don't know um, yeah who am I yeah, it's true. Do you still blog actually under Ballerina Couture or have you dropped the blog yeah. and it's now just the business? I would love to. I have like a blogging section on my website, but I just, yeah, I do not have time for that. I, that's why I think Instagram is like a blog with photos, you yeah. know, and a little like a little snippet. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. So if you, so we're getting to the end of so this is like, this is an exciting question. I always love to hear this. So if you had one message to give to the world, what would it be? Oh, it's a loaded question. So you feel free to take a minute. <laughs> be yourself. Just be yourself. Beautiful. Wow. That's empowering. That is, yeah. Especially now in the age of like, you know, where anything could be fake. It's just like that authenticity. So it's true. So actually, before we close, is there anything that actually I didn't touch on or that you'd like to share? Um, any parting words of wisdom would you like to say? Um, I feel like we covered a lot. <laughs> yeah, we did. It was really good. I actually really enjoyed getting to know. There's some things I had no idea. So this is awesome. Amazing. Okay, so then just to conclude this is I'm, you're obviously doing some incredible work, not only in the community for in, in the ballet community, but also in fashion, like you mentioned, by bending both words and just making dancers feel more beautiful. Is there anything that we can do to help you, uh, to support you, to shower you with love, whatever it is, is there anything that we can do to help you? Uh, I feel like nowadays it's just give me a thumbs up or a heart on Instagram, whatever <laughs> it is. Um, I always love hearing from my customers or just hearing from people in general. Um, and, you know, as a content creator, it's not necessarily super organic to be creating things every single day that are authentic, which is my goal. So I also love to hear from, um, you know, my viewers what they want to see, what they like, what they don't like, what they're interested in learning about, that sort of thing. So any sort of feedback I think is very valuable to me. Amazing. Well, let's make sure to do that then. Well, Tina, this has been so amazing to chat with you. I am so inspired and so excited to continue following your journey. And obviously, so guys, that concludes another amazing episode with Tina. I am so excited that she was here. I'm so excited. She said she shed so much light on, on her life and her story and that uh, you will want to follow her on Instagram, to be honest. Uh, Ballerina Couture is her, I'll leave the details on the side and down below because her photography is just dreamy. She's often hosting now live sessions since we're in quarantine um, with um, classes and workshops. So feel free to join her uh, live. She does it under Ballerina Couture, but also under the National Ballet of Canada. So if you're not in Toronto, you're still lucky, you still get to join in. And if you are, even better. All right, ladies. Have a wonderful rest of the day and thank you for joining me today. Until next time.